everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. Today we're going to be talking about something that was pretty headline grabbing. If a company should try to bring back the extinct dodo bird. And I feel like the headlines have kind of gotten blown out of proportion about what's actually happening or possible or all of that stuff. It's just a very kind of clickbaity title. So we're going to go through an article in Scientific American talking about kind of the science behind this, if it's possible, and uh, if it should even be done. So the the article is by Christine Keneally. Not entirely sure how to pronounce the name, but it's titled A De-Extinction Company Wants to Bring Back the Dodo. So there's this company called Colossal Biosciences, which seemed like they've kind of done this multiple times. It was uh, funded by Ben Lamb, who's a tech entrepreneur, and Harvard University geneticist George Church. So they launched an avian genomics group and a reported $150 million of additional investment has been given to add the dodo to this lineup of things they're trying to bring back. So it was like the mammoth on the list and then the thylacine, which some people think isn't actually extinct. And now the dodo has joined that list. And so they used to live on this island um, off Africa, but they went extinct in the mid to late 17th century after humans came. So basically um, they weighed 15 to 20 kilograms and they were just basically this bird that humans walked up to and killed. And they didn't have any fear of humans because they didn't hadn't seen humans. And so they just became extinct because of humans killing them, them having no fear of humans. And then people brought like rats and other animals that ate their eggs. They only had like one egg um, every year. Or they produced a single egg on the ground, which other animals such as monkeys and rats ate. So gone from that one island gone extinct unfortunately very sad um overall but anyways they uh beth shapiro said this was just the start of the project um kind of making the announcement and so it says in 2002 she published research in science which is a huge journal like one of the biggest journals describing how her team had extracted a tiny piece of the bird's mitochondrial dna so the mitochondria, for those of you who don't know, is what people call like the powerhouse of the cell. And there's some DNA that's passed from mother to offspring in those mitochondrial DNA. So they got a snippet of that DNA and found the Dota's closest living relative was the Nicobar pigeon. And so then they actually ended up reconstructing the entire genome. So the genetics are basically um, what tells the bird to be. So as it's developing the genes will you know say here's a wing here's a this is where the feather should go it's all the information about how the bird should form and develop so having the entire genome having that whole sequence is a big step of trying to recreate something if you were going to do that um so that took decades but they're saying that to taking that and then creating like an actual living animal from that's very different this feels very jurassic parky um in all honesty, but it says most de-extinction programs aim to recreate a proxy of an extinct animal by genetic engineering, editing the genome of a closely related species that's still living to replicate the target species genome. So basically you're not really bringing the dodo back. You're saying this is like a proxy of what a dodo would be. And it's going to have to be, have other living species involved to kind of get you to that place. Um, so it says the edited genome would then be implanted into an egg cell of a related species. They were talking about doing this in pigeons and then basically a pigeon would birth an animal with the dodo genes. So the company is trying to uh, work on all these problems that they potentially have. So one of the biggest issues is with avian genomics because they were able to clone a sheep. Dolly the sheep was the first animal um, to be cloned successfully from adult cells but they uh, say they can't clone birds because you need access to an egg cell that's ready for fertilization, but not fertilized yet. So the fact that it's like an actual things are happening in an egg provides some challenges, but also it kind of helps in a certain way. Uh, so they're working on that. And they say, if it works, the uh, basically primordial germ cells from the eggs of the bird from the pigeon from pigeons would be manipulated to develop into a dodo like bird um so the final version of a dodo will emerge from a pigeon that has been engineered to be the size of a dodo so the size of the egg will be consistent 
Uh, so that's like an issue they're working on, which is harder with birds than it is in mammals. Um, but then it says a certain stage will be simpler in birds because everything happens in an egg. So it's kind of like once they have the first hurdles crossed, it might be easier because all that development's happening like in the egg itself. So once a recreated animal is born, more questions arise because most animals have nature versus nurture. They're born with this information, what to do, and also like their parents teach them, but there's no dodo birds to teach them. So kind of that nurture aspect um, is kind of going to be like an approximation of dodo like behavior and, and things so you're never going to have like the full dodo bird again raised by parents and learning what a dodo bird would do uh so it says there's nobody around to teach the dodo how to be a dodo um Mikhail sending a, a postdoctoral researcher in paleogenomics at the university of copenhagen said um so saying like it's a de-extinction is kind of not super true so it's not possible to bring back the dodo even if it becomes possible to build a bird with a dodo genome so you could get something like maybe an approximate recreation of a dodo but it would never be you know necessarily a real dodo so and then they also say that that proxy animal must survive in a world that's different than it was like 300 years ago when the dodo was here so on that island um, they were slow to reproduce. They had all these other factors around them. So the environment is very different. And once you create this dodo like bird, it has to be able to survive in the world. So a goal here is to create an animal that can be physically and psychologically well in the environment in which it lives. If we're going to bring something back that's fundament functionally equivalent to a dodo, then we'll have to find, identify, or create habitats in which they're able to survive. So they're talking about um, maybe bringing them back to that same island off Africa to kind of help the environment almost. They say that giant tortoises introduced to an island near there to replace an extinct species helped revive native ebony trees by eating their fruit and distributing their seeds around the landscape. So kind of what they're saying is that that niche the dodo bird occupied is no longer there. So if you put something to fill that niche, it could help the environment overall. So think if you took, you know, I don't know, all species of fish out of like a river, and then that environment would totally change because there's no fish. And then if you put fish back, even if they weren't necessarily the exact same fish, but they had the same role, it could kind of bring back that former ecology. Um, so they think making a dodo proxy is probably easier than doing a mammoth or something like that. I've been hearing for years, people are gonna bring back mammoths and we really haven't had any update on that, it feels like. Um, so they're also questioning, you know, I like this quote, um, you can genome edit the hell out of something and say you've remade a species, but is it really the species? You know, that's really one of the big questions here. Um, they're saying the dodo is a good choice because fetus development happens in a short time span inside an egg, not a surrogate mother, unlike a mammoth, which would have to be gestated by an elephant for nearly two years. Man, that's a long time. It would be slightly easier to work with a chick than with a thylacine cub. Ethical question with the dodo is whether the money is well spent or if we should spend the money trying to preserve some other living pigeons that are almost extinct. I mean, that's a very valid question, but the thing about it is it's a private company. So people donated their money to this cause. It's not like you can just say like, hey, donate that money to other conservation work. Like this is a private company it's not like government funding that's going to be shifted to other places but it's definitely interesting it uh does remind me of it brings up all these Jurassic Park questions where I don't remember the exact quote but it's like you know we worked so hard to or you guys worked so hard to see if you could do it you didn't stop to think if you should and that's what this really reminds me about um, there's a nice, some nice information from Tom Gilbert, director of the Danish National Research Foundation Center of Evolutionary Hologenomics, um, who's on the advisory board. He said the idea and technology behind rewilding with extinct species, he loved the idea, but wondered about the influence of human morality on the choice of species. Why stop at the good things? What about the bad things? The pathogens now eradicated. Um, so people would then be picking and choosing what to kind of bring back. It's not a solution to the extinction crisis. Uh, extinction is forever, Shapiro said. But by pursuing the problem of dodo de-extinction, they're developing critically needed tools for avian genomics, including for the genetic 
rescue of currently threatened species such as editing genetic diversity back into a shrunk and threatened bird population. So this is kind of, it feels a little half-baked where they're saying if there's a population with only like a few individuals left, they could re um, kind of recycle some new genetics or put some new genes in there. So the population doesn't become stagnant. It's kind of like the same thing with inbreeding. If you have creatures with all the same genes and they're constantly breeding, you need some new genes to kind of keep the population robust and healthy. So they're saying they could use this technology that way. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. It kind of seems like they're trying to just say like, no, we're doing all these good things. We're trying to bring the dodo back, but maybe it's possible. So it says the dodo is only one of many lost birds. 161 avian species have been classified as extinct since 1500, according to a 2017 report from BirdLife International. And honestly, I thought that number would be way higher. Like the way that sometimes they talk about extinction, they talk about all these species going extinct, only 161 avian species. Like, of course, all of those species are valuable and it's sad that they were lost. But I, for some reason, my, my, my mind had a way higher number. I thought it'd be like, you know, thousands or hundred thousand or something i guess i'd never really thought about a certain number since 1500 but um you know very sad to lose every single one of those species and hopefully hopefully we don't lose any more um but you know it feels like we'll we're destined to lose some more at some point so colossal bio bioscience is relying on the creature's significance to inspire scientists and the general public to engage with all the problems of extinction. We could have picked lots of different birds, such as Spiro raising her right arm to reveal a dodo tattoo. I happen to really love the dodo. So it's it's an interesting project. Um, a lot of questions about whether they're going to be able to do it, whether they should do it, and kind of the impact of what it would actually be. Because with something like the thylacine, is if you do this and you like bring back a thylacine proxy and then you release them like what if there are still thylacines out there like there I, I don't believe there's any dodo birds left but with things that aren't necessarily 100 percent extinct i feel like that could cause some some problems or some controversies for sure so what do you guys think about this do you think they should do it do you think they're going to be successful doing it um and just kind of your thoughts on this idea of de-extinction. So let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.